here's the deer's nostril opening, one here, one over here on this side right here, okay? Now, we all, we all know that when you put your fingers, now you put your fingers in a deer's nostril, just <coughs> right here, you put it in right here, the general rule of thumb is that you don't want to see any hair protruding out any place around your finger, all right? Unless he's fleeing, unless he's doing something, uh, working a licking branch or whether he's panting or something like that where there's actually movement happening on the nostril. If it's a relaxed nostril, you put your finger in there, you shouldn't see any hair protruding out past that finger. Okay. Now, as you mount this thing, you've got three reference points on a nose. You've got the top of the nostril pad, which the reference point on that is, it should be three, it, when, you, when you pull that skin up on the top of this nose there, the top of the nose pad should coincide with the Jacob, Jacob's gland. And if you don't know what a Jacob's gland is, then the nose pad should be three quarters of the way back on the nostril opening. All right? So that's number one reference. Number two is, is this corner right here, which is the bottom of the nostril opening. That would be this position right here, okay? This, this position right here on the bottom, bottom of the nostril opening. Reference point number two, there's a corner right there. We've all seen it. Elk got it, mule deer got it, white tail got it. Number two reference, that's where the rule of thumb plays in. You stick your finger in there, you shouldn't see any hair coming out there. Now the third one you're gonna hit is, if you was to skin this nose pad out, and you and you and you you know you've got the inner mouth material flopped down here in front of you. Okay, what happens is is it comes from this nostril opening down this point right here, and then all of a sudden it curves back out again. This is like a V owner right here, and then it flares back out that direction. You remember that on your skins? You know what I'm talking about. Okay? That corner needs to be a setting on the lip. Okay? If you're bringing that corner up in this area up in here, you're using inner mouth material as a nose pad. Elk, mule deer, white tail, all the same. And of course antelope bank, because I got the little old narrow thing comes down here in front of me. But those three and I guarantee you, I have not found an elk form. I have not found a mule deer form. Very few whitetail forms that offer you that distance there that's right. They're all too long. And if you're buying replacement noses, the whole nose, you know, where you cut it off the mannequin, you put your artificial nose on there, they all have that. They will, it will cause you a nightmare, okay? but you've got to have those three reference points in order. Like I said, unless you're doing an open mouth, fleeman, anything with action. But the thing about it is, is the only time this is gonna pull out is when the end of the nose comes up, like a fleeman, like a reaching up to pick something, uh, a persimmon off of a limb or something, blackberry off the bush or whatever you wanna do. If this changes, then this can change. But if this is relaxed, then those three reference points is have to follow that rule of thumb. Okay? And there's going to be a lot of marks on the score sheets about it. Because they, and I see this problem over and over and over again. Okay? People, you, get, you guys are fighting. That's what you're doing. You're fighting it on your mannequins because you're not, you ain't found it on your reference pictures yet. You're just assuming that that's the way it's supposed to be because I paid sixty dollars for that thing. Damn it, it ought to be right. So how are you remedying it? Do I? How are you fixing it? Okay. There's two ways you can fix it. The first way I like to eliminate the problem is is let me let me step back here just a little bit farther. Here again, when you're buying mannequins, look at your reference pictures, and this is something you can get out of field and stream on the front cover. Look at the animals that's just standing there, and the photographer, you know, he's taking pictures that big old mule deer just standing there, you know, and he's got ears in a relaxed position, you know, and he just ain't concerned about nothing, you know. See what his nostril wear is doing. It'd be closed off, I'll bet you $100. So, right click on your first picture.
And they said, well, I, can, I, I raised deer for 30 years. I used to go out there and try to get all the reference pictures I could off of them. You know, I had an old breeder buck, an original buck, the old hoss. I mean, he didn't know he was a deer. He thought he was part of the family, you know. And he'd sit at the dinner table and eat deer meat with us. Yeah. But even hoss, I could not get inner nostril pictures off of him because he was so laid back and relaxed that he never opened up his nose. I mean, he was always relaxed, so his nostril was always closed, okay? Now, when I go buy mannequins, almost every mannequin that I buy has got an open nostril. I've got a relaxed position. Everything on this deer is perfectly relaxed. You know, when I sculpt my eyes, they're relaxed. When I set my ears, they're relaxed. But yet, here on the end, I've got an opened up nostril. The big thing in competition is starting a story and ending with the same story. Anytime that you throw something in there, like just what we're talking about, relaxed, 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 unrelaxed, panning, now you've thrown a, a, a whole different story into the mix and it's not making sense. Okay? So uh, be careful with that. Be careful with that. Is you know the nose openings. Now you the nose openings is something that you're gonna have to work with, and, and that takes clay work and stuff like that to get it right. But I see a lot of deer that guys have done it themselves with the drumming tool. Actually, open the nostril up even farther than what the mannequin was. And I'm seeing this deer. He's just perfectly content, relaxed. Bam! He's got these freaking panting nostrils. You know. So so be careful. Be careful. But the one way that I do uh, decrease this, this area right at the, here, I start, I start off first with the rasp. Okay, now see the difference? One side to the other. Just that little thing right there. Change that distance from here to here. Okay. Now you say, well, now he's opened up the nostrils. No, if you look at that reference picture that's going around there, here's another thing, too. You know, I mean, like I said, my seminars always run because there's <laughs> you get off on this tree branch and look at all the other branches that goes off of it. You know, we're talking about a freaking nostril opening and we just keep going on different branches here. But now that we're speaking about this, you th you'd think my, my lower nest, I've already lied to myself because we're just talking about opening up the nostril. I haven't opened up that nostril. All I've done is changed this, this, this distance right in here, okay? What I've done is, is and, and here again, a lot of the deer in there, when you guys are dremeling, Dremeling your nostril openings and stuff like that right there. Uh, look at your reference. But number one thing, here is your nose pad. Do you see where the septum starts on this thing? When I say the septum, I'm talking about where you can shine a light on one nostril opening and see it shining through, through the other nostril opening. You've got the nose pad here. The septum starts back here in the nostril opening the back of it. It don't start up here in the front corner. This is still all flesh right in here. Elk the same way. Mule deer same way. White tails that way. Everybody and even the artificial noses that you're buying bring you right from the nose pad right around. They run you right into a septum in the front of the nose. In a corner. So you take your skin, you think, well, it's got to be right. I paid $75 for this damn thing. You glue your skin to it, and all of a sudden you start getting ready to do your finish work, and you think, jeez, my niche. I got so you start doing sculpt all in there, all game. You start trying to eliminate that corner. Well, what happens is instead of having one corner, now you've got two corners because you've got to build up a sculpt all that never ends in there. You see where I'm going with this thing? When all this stuff here should have been done from the very beginning. 
when you dremeled out your notes, just like we've started.